right, welcome back everybody for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the article and video that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books you can still probably find tucked away in those cheap boxes, those discount bins, those dollar boxes, whether you're shopping at a half price book, uh, you know, a yard sale, flea market, that whatever you're digging for cheap comics, these are the things you might be able to still find tucked away in those boxes based off of some of the recent news, rumors, announcements, things actually going on in comic books if you decide to take the time to actually read them and uh, things like that. Just things kind of jumping out at me that make me think of books that I want to go and look for based off of the things that are happening today. With that all said, hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, you hit that alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. And if you want to see this week's selection of books, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I will be right back. Okay, so we're going to start in with the format that I set up last week to bring this show back. And we are going to first start off with the news. So some news items popped this week that got me thinking about some books. So let's get into those first. Starting off with a lot of things dribbling out of like CinemaCon. I think there was even a little tease for Deadpool and Wolverine. But we are also getting basically a lot of confirmations of things that people have been speculating on, etc. But here we go. We know we are getting a crap load of Deadpool characters. Basically, we're getting the Deadpool core. Uh, and you can see here, you got a head pool, you got kid pool, even a baby pool and a dog pool. Tons of pools, right? Uh, surprisingly, no Lady Deadpool on this picture, but maybe they're saving that for a bigger surprise. With that said, let's look at some of these other characters that you can still go and grab some books uh, related to them, if you're, you know, if you're into it. Let's start off with head, the head. So, head pool. This is going to be tricky. There's a lot of different options you can go with here. Uh, it's not a straightforward, as you were, uh, first appearance kind of thing. Uh, because realistically, where does the this head pool start? Well, he starts off as a zombie. Full-fledged zombie. So for that, you got to go to Marvel Zombies number three. This is the initial run, the first volume of Marvel Zombies. And inside this book, there is one panel of Deadpool. That's it. This is not, it looks a lot bigger than it is. It's not a full page spread. It's just one panel that's got a zombie Deadpool in it. But there's technically the first appearance of zombie Deadpool. Now, with that said, this book already has a little bit of a, I don't want to say heat behind it because it's not hot in any way. Uh, notoriety, maybe? It's because it's a, it's a classic homage. I mean, you have you know, the whole 340, but zombified. So it's a book that a lot of people like for that reason alone. And that's why you'll see some of these prices here. Uh, nine, eight, sell over 110 bucks. But you can still find copies selling for only 10 to $15, uh, which is not too bad on the, uh, you know, Ebays in the aftermarket. Granted, uh, available copies might be looking for a bit more, 20, 40, and some even much higher, but 130 for like a nine, eight. I know it's not the cheapest book, but is this really the book you want for Headpool anyway? Probably not, but it is technically the first appearance of Zombie Deadpool, who will eventually become a head. So that's why I just wanted to show it in case you find it. Not saying you're going to find this in a dollar box. This is probably going to be a tougher find in a dollar box, but keep an eye out for any of these Marvel Zombies books because you might find more interesting stuff like our next book, which is Marvel Zombies Volume 3. So this is Marvel Zombies 3. This is issue 1. Inside of this book, we find out how we get just a Deadpool head because inside it, our zombie Deadpool basically gets killed by an industrial fan, destroying his entire body, leaving just a head. That's really it. I mean, there's a little bit of a fight scene ahead of this, and then we just get left with this. No follow-up, no like talking head later or tease or anything like that. We just see that his body is obliterated, but that head is over there flying off into the distance, which we will come back to later. But for now... This book, in case you want this one to see how he became just a head, you could find this because this book ain't that expensive either. Look, lots have sold, and that's a lot of it, it, three issues, one, two, and number three for 10 bucks. And then issue this first issue here, three dollars. Not a pricey book. It's not gonna make you rich uh, or anything like that. It is just a step in the process to get us to 
a head pool, I guess. But there are copies listed for 10 to 12 bucks. So if you find one for a dollar or cheap, you know, maybe you can make a few bucks if somebody bites at a later point. All right. Following this series, we then get volume four of Marvel Zombies, which is continue this crazy zombie stories. And we have Morbius and all these other characters rolling in. Uh, Greg Land covers here on this run. And at the end of this first issue, and then following through uh, this, I think it's four issue mini, uh, we'll get a little bit more. But in here, at the end of this first issue, we do see, hey, there's the head, the head back. You know, the head comes back, zombie Deadpool uh, there with the zombie Simon Garth. And apparently these two kind of go through an adventure together throughout this volume and you get more zombie head pool uh, in that. But it's at the end of this issue four, number one, where you kind of get that head on its own now and talking and giving you that uh, classic Deadpool humor. This book is also pretty cheap. I would think this one would be a little bit more because now we're talking about, well, it's actually the head. Uh, so you would think we'd get a little more interest here. Volumes, uh, not volumes, uh, lots have sold, uh, for like 20 bucks to 12 bucks. I mean, those are multiple issues, it's like full runs, the complete sets with extras, and they're only 12 and 20 dollars. So definitely cheap, no individuals selling, uh, for this book. And, uh, some listed for as high as 10, 950, but look, there's a copy listed for like a dollar 58. Like there's a lot of cheap copies of this out there and you can get all four issues of this set. 12 bucks like this is cheap so this is something you could probably go and dig and find in those cheap boxes you know just for fun or you know who knows what might happen down the line but uh comics should be fun so this is a fun book you can go even for just a scavenger hunt style uh you know goal or game see if you can go and find this and if you guys do find any of these books that i talk about on the show please tag me on instagram i'd love to see what you guys are digging out of the boxes and if you actually find them uh out there after i you know bring some of this nonsense up I don't know. Like I said, I just like talking comics. So let's just for the sake of argument also go with another book that may, that I think of when I think of the zombie head and no, not the, the variant where uh, Deadpool's doing the Heisman pose, but Deadpool Merc with a mouth number one, because this is a classic homage poster too, just like this entire run has awesome homage covers to begin with, but we do get a pretty fun story with the head once again on its own. So with that inside the guts of this number one, you get, you know, basically this tribe of characters worshiping the head. And then Deadpool stumbles into this. So weird story, kind of fun, kind of silly, nonsensical to be sure. But this book does OK. So you might not find it for a buck, but it doesn't hurt to look. Uh, it's not expensive either, though. We're talking, what, 750 to 10 bucks copies were sold for. So it's not like it's a pricey one. Uh, there are copies listed for 10, 15, up to close to $20. But by and large, again, this is not that expensive of a book. Some of the other covers here in this series might go for a bit more because of the homages, especially I think Lady Deadpool shows up in what, issue seven of this run. And there's a couple of cool movie posters uh, mixed in here too. But issue one, for the most part, you can see here, it's relatively affordable. And it is what it is. Granted, the head also shows up later and here and there, and you get more stories, especially with the prelude to Deadpool Core, which basically builds this Deadpool Core team, which is, looks like the team we're going to be getting in some fashion in this movie. So let's look at that series. Granted, you can go grab Prelude to Deadpool Core number one, which for the most part is just a Lady De Deadpool one shot, and then they start building a team from there, and then each subsequent issue adds a new member to this squad. So yeah, I'm not giving you the rundown on all the books, but issue one is basically just Lady Deadpool. And then we start getting introduced to some of these other characters that we see are going to be in the movie, like our next character, which is Kidpool. So this is the Kid Deadpool, not the baby one, but the kid one. The baby one, I'm pretty sure is just really the Scotty Young cover. I don't know if I, there's any other appearances of a baby version of Deadpool, at least none that I found. If you know of any, please Put it in the comments down below. Help everybody out. Give us something fun to go and hunt and go and dig for. Uh, but again, I would not pay a lot of money for any of these books. These are probably going to be very quick cameos in the movie just for laughs, for fun. And it doesn't hurt to go and look for these kinds of books just to add to your collection and just have them. Just make your make yourself smile. So when you see the movie, you can nudge the person next to you and say, I got that first appearance. It's like, what is that? It's like, Well, that's Deadpool as a kid. That's Deadpool as a dog. Whatever, just for fun. This hobby should be fun. With that said, 
I mentioned Prelude to the Deadpool core, introducing these characters, and that's what we get with issue two. And yes, this spec has already come around the cycle when people were rumored and hearing about Kidpool being in this movie. So this isn't new news, but doesn't hurt to know it in case you guys all missed it. I don't know where the level of collector you guys are all are that watch this. So I'm going to tell everybody everything that I could possibly think of. So this is a book. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to find because of, again, it got hot at one point. So everybody went scouring for those boxes. But there's always new stock. New things come back around. And uh, discount boxes get restocked and refilled. And uh, new collections come rolling into your LCSs or into those half price books, etc. So it doesn't hurt to know. And it doesn't hurt to keep looking. So with that said, inside the guts of this book, Yes, you can see he's on the cover, so it helps there. All of these cover kind of connect like in a film uh, film strip kind of thing. is like they're building out the story. As I said, Lady Deadpool was in the first issue. She continues on throughout the series, so she's there along with Kidpool. And uh, inside the book, like right away, you get told the story of Kid Deadpool, basically. You see here, he's given a wedgie to a kid, you know, a Cyclops. Sets the tone. Sets the tone for the book. As I mentioned, this book has come around the spec cycle before, so not surprised to see copies for 10 to 15 bucks. Best offers on 20. Uh, doesn't mean you won't find one out there buried in a cheap box. You might. Asking price is still in that 15 to 20 dollar kind of range. So your job's gonna be tougher because this came through a couple of months ago or several months ago, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. So just want to keep you reminded that this is a book that might be worth and fun finding the entire run of this prelude. Granted. Uh, that first issue was a Rye, Rye Liefeld art throughout, and it was just not good. But, you know, they mixed up the artists as we go through this, so it's not all terrible. With that said, uh, we also get a tease for you guys out there who like the teases at the end of this book. So at the end of this issue, we get a tease of what's coming next, which is, hey, look down in the corner, dog pool. So that's kind of an ad teaser. He's not really there in the story, but. I know a lot of people will make the argument that's a first appearance. Doesn't matter. Just know what you're what you're buying and why you're buying it. So no, at the end of issue two, you get that little shot, that little tease that he's coming next issue. But all it doesn't matter because Dogpool, which again we've known for a little while now, we were getting in this movie, uh, is going to be in the movie and in this series is introduced in issue three. Also on the cover of the issue, inside the guts of the issue, it's basically a story, origin story of this character, and that gets brought into this team, and that's how this series kind of plays out. It kind of brings you up to speed on Lady Deadpool, why she joins his core, kid pool, dog pool. Uh, once again, inside here, you see the experiments that they're doing, and it doesn't look exactly like the dog they've got from the movie, but you get the idea. It's going to be a ratty little beat-up thing that is probably going to have a few laughs in it for us. This book, just like the Kid Pool one, it's already been through our cycle. So not surprised. Copies are still 10 to 15 bucks uh, with copies sold. Asking prices, 20, 25, 30. Surprised a little bit more. I guess a little more hype for dogs and kids. I don't know. But with that said, that's our last little Deadpool nugget. I could have kept going because looping back to Headpool He's on issue four, but since that's not his first appearance, he's on the cover, and that's how Headpool gets brought to the team because there's a whole backstory of another island that Deadpool finds the Headpool on, and he brings him into the core, and then that's the prelude to the Deadpool core, and then you get a Deadpool core issue one, which is another first in book to look for, obviously, out there. But some of those things are a little pricier, and, well, I don't want to give you a whole rundown of the whole thing. I want to give you a couple of different topics. So felt like this was enough Deadpool for one day. So... We're cutting that here and moving on to our next story, uh, new story to kind of uh, look for books. And this is following up on some of the rumors and uh, little sneak peeks we're getting for the new Superman movie. So David Korinsvet, I guess that's how you say his name, uh, was mentioning the books that were influences. No surprises. They are books that have been mentioned before for this movie and uh, this reboot. Uh, including All-Star Superman, which you can still find most of that run in those cheap boxes if you want to go and find them. I thought about going that route, but instead I went with the other one mentioned here, which is the uh, Superman for All Seasons, because, yes, these are prestige format books. They were $5 cover prices, and they have that nice, glossy cardstock cover. And even with that, I've still found these in dollar bins. So they are, are and could still be out there. So it doesn't hurt to go and dig. And again, 
I'm not saying this is going to make you rich. I mean, this is basically a storyline they're saying they're referencing to make this movie. It's just a fun thing to go and get. Go and read it. It's a pretty good Jeff Loeb, Tim, Tim Sale, you know, collected edition. You get all four issues. You find them out there. It's worth the time just to read it, you know? With that said, this is issue one, and for fun, I will show you two, three, and four as well, so you know what you're looking for, but they all basically kind of have the same vibe. Like I said, they're that prestige format, graphic novel-ish, uh, thicker card stock, uh, a little pricier than normal, if you were to have bought it new. But since we're digging in cheap boxes, it could be discounted in any number of ways. Uh, and just for pricing information, so you know what you're looking at. Sets could be like 30 bucks, and then you can see issue one, best offer on 15. So that's kind of the top end of things, really. Most of these go for a lot less, as you can see here with some of the asking prices. Issue one, seven to eight bucks, which is just a couple bucks over cover. And then the whole set for 30, which when you do the math on that, that's less than $6 a book. And considering I think this was a $4.99 cover price back in 1998 when it came out, I think it's 98. Uh, that was a long time ago. Like we got to remember that 1998 was over 25 years ago. So there's plenty of opportunities for this to be buried in collections. It's not a new book at, in any stretch of the word. So with that, and I know we're kind of looping back to Deadpool. Maybe I should have started off with Superman so it could have flowed better. But we do have another news story that does kind of tie into Deadpool a little bit because apparently he's going to be headlining, leading this new version of X-Force that we'll be getting with the new updated X-Men universe in comics coming in the next few months. So this is another recent announcement that X-Force announces a new series when an unexpected choice of team leader, and I would say an un unexpected choice of team. And uh, some of the team here, I'm not going to give you their first because they're already pretty pricey, like uh, Rachel Summers. And uh, I think Psylocke's on this squad. Uh, and then you got Deadpool, obviously. So you're not going to find his first for cheap. But some of the other members, you still have some opportunities to find their their uh, first appearances for cheap if you are into this kind of thing. And you like hunting books. And you like hunting books based off of, you know, comics and, and et cetera. So with that, another member of this squad is going to be Forge. Now. We've already talked about Forge a few times over the last few weeks because of X-Men 97. He showed up two weeks ago uh, in Life Death Part 1. Looking forward to that. Life Death Part 2 is next week's episode, so we're going to see some more Forge. His first appearance has already been moving a little bit, and we, like I said, we talked about it on TAC a couple of times, uh, but it's Uncanny X-Men 184. Now, you may see this book start popping up on hot lists and watch lists, etc., but there are a lot of these. And you could still find these pretty cheap. It's really condition sensitive. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of a well-loved copy if it's like a dollar or cheap just to get it. Just so you have it. So you can flip through it and read it. Because you want to open this up to get all of the awesomeness that is the first appearance of Forge. Which is hip out, short shorts. Who, love, who wears short shorts? Forge wears short shorts. That's right. That, you need it just for this. You got the, you got the Freddie Mercury stash and everything. That's a look. Socks pulled up. That's a look right there. It looks like he has baseball cleats on with the flaps, like the tongues coming out over the front of the shoes. Anyway, first appearance of Forge. You could find, as I said, this thing has been selling pretty well of late, but it's still 10 to 12 bucks raw. And those are higher grade raws. There are a lot cheaper copies than that selling. Uh, 135 for 90. So again, that's the higher grade, higher end. Available copies, you can see there are copies at auction starting at a dollar. Buy it now, it's for only two fifty, five bucks. Like again, it's really based on condition, so mid grade copies really are very very cheap still. So if you find a nice little mid grade copy, if it's cheap enough, just grab it. it doesn't hurt. It's still a first appearance, it's still a first appearance of a character we're going to be getting more of going forward as we see not only in X Men ninety seven the cartoon, but in the comics as well as he's going to be a part. And he's apparently an Omega level mutant now, which I guess, considering he can create anything, I guess that fits. So, uh, Omega level, uh, Forge, you, you don't want to sleep on the Omega levels because they, uh, usually have a big part to play in events as we, uh, roll on through. Uh, if you know anything about X Men, that's all I'm saying. They usually get big parts when they're that leveled up. With that said, let's keep going to another character that's going to be part of this team, which is the character of Sage. Sage initially was a villain, and it's actually Tessa, and she actually first appeared way back 
on a uncanny 132. Again, I think pretty sure we covered this on tack within the last couple of weeks because you know, we were talking about Sebastian Shaw, Hellfire Club, etc. Uh, but Tessa has been around a while. This book, it's it's pricey, so it's not like super pricey, but it's probably not going to be in a dollar bin. Like this, this is a book. It's going to be a few bucks for a back issue of this. This is during that a great run of X Men where you got first uh, like Star Jammers and Emma Frost and uh, etc. You got the Wolverine. I'm the best there is what I do. What I do. I think it's the next issue. A lot of good stuff in this stretch of books. So finding it really really cheap is going to be a tall order. But I wanted to tell you that's her first appearance as Tessa. But we do have another option for you for this series because she wasn't always and didn't remain part of the Hellfire Club and didn't always remain a villain. Chris Claremont brought her into the Extreme X-Men team. Uh, I think this is early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. I can't remember when this was actually was released. I think it was 2001 into 2002, but not 100%. But he brought Tessa into the team, but now as the character called Sage, like a living computer uh, history book, basically, because they're in the whole series. They're going after... Uh, destiny's diaries and etc it's a pretty fun run and a pretty cool team too uh i like the salvador la Roca art in this uh i actually like this run i think it's underrated and they're very very cheap you can find a lot of this run out there in those cheap boxes i think they're worth flipping through and reading them uh personally but just know if you want the first sage like her using that name sage i'm pretty sure it was in this first issue i think you know uh that's her rebranding as as a hero for the squad here but this book is very, very cheap. You can see here, it's selling in lots. Issues one through eight. Eight issues for only $5. Uh, and then another lot that was 20 bucks. And that was uh, a full run of Extreme X-Men. That's 20 bucks. And this is like 40-some issues. There's 40 plus issues in this. I mean, that lot says all 46 issues. So I guess it was 46 plus others. For only 20 bucks. That's what I'm talking about. These are cheap. These are out there. Give them a read. It's a, it's a nice little ride. Uh, and like I said, you can see the team. You got Psylocke there. You got Rogue was part of this team. I like the red and the black that they were rocking. Bishop, Beast. It was a fun squad. Uh, and like I said, some decent stories. And Storm, obviously, there too. Uh, available copies individually. You can see two bucks to four bucks. It is very, very cheap. But you could definitely find this in a dollar box. Just go digging. You, you won't have any trouble probably finding one of these. Continuing on, uh, another character that's going to be part of this squad is Surge. Surge was a character that showed up in New Mutants number eight. Uh, this is after that Middleton runner covers, but it's a pretty cool Chris Boccolo cover. This book got hot for a while because a lot of people thought that Negasonic Teenage Warhead's girlfriend uh, Yukio was this character uh, because they had a similar power set with like the electric electricity kind of lasso -y thing. Uh, but they're not exactly the same character. But that's when this book initially got some heat behind it for uh, Deadpool 2, I think it was. But Surge, who's going to be part of this team, and she's been around on a few X squads uh, throughout the year. She's going to be now part of X Force. She first shows up in this issue. Uh, it's kind of a slow played introduction. We see this character. We don't know anything much about her. Uh, and then at the end of this issue, somebody tries to help her and she hurts them. And then they bring her a little bit more closer into the team in the next issue. And eventually, eventually, she becomes part of the squad with the new mutants. But here she is, first appearing in issue eight. Which, like I said, it used to be pricey, but now it's not that expensive. This one time hit 50 bucks. Yeah, this book hit 50 bucks for weird Deadpool 2 movie spec. Remember that. Uh, if that kind of stuff can happen and still happens, but then you also see things, they come back. They come back down to earth. So don't get FOMO. 10 bucks, a lot of copies, 9 to 10 bucks, it's still selling for. So people don't forget completely. And you can see copies available, seven, eight bucks, ten bucks. Yes, there are still people looking for like 25 and 30, but there are plenty of cheaper copies available because uh the interest just isn't there as it used to be. But maybe with her appearance on the new X4 squad, her profile gets raised. Who knows? One more character that was kind of interesting. It doesn't, it looks like they have a different look to them. Uh going into this is this character Tank, who showed up in Ironheart as a villain. So Tank fighting Miles, fighting uh, Riri Williams, Ironheart. First showed up in Ironheart, number six. I see the spotlight with uh, with Miles there also joining. He was like the villain of the issue. Uh, he kind of 
gets all built up like later on, but here when he first shows up, he's rather skinny looking. But yeah, this character apparently is going to be joining the X Force team as their tank. If you guys know uh, gaming culture, yeah, so you need a tank. You need a tank. Uh, but this book, even with all the heat that Riri once had, remember all those many, many moons ago? This is still seven bucks on its own. There's a lot of a few issues that's only $13.89. Every issue of this run used to be like 15 to 20 bucks for a while there because everybody loved Riri Williams. They couldn't wait uh, for her to show up, and she did show up in Black Panther 2. And uh, we haven't seen much of her since, but we're still supposedly getting a series. I just don't know if the the demand is there anymore. I think that she missed her moment to capitalize. But if you look, there are copies still out there asking 17 to 20 bucks. So there's still some people hoping, hoping she bounces back into the into that spec cycle, I guess. With that said, that's the heavier portion of the show. We're already 25 minutes in. I still got a couple more things to talk about because that was the news part. As I've been doing, we're also going to separate it out and look at comics. So for those of you who actually open these little picture books that we buy and collect and actually read the stories inside as uh, they're meant to be done. Uh, this might be more interesting for you guys. But with that said, new this week, we got a new issue of Batman and Robin number eight. And this is continuing the story with the man bat cult and all that stuff. You got uh, a lot of things going on here. Damien and Batman. I like this series. The art is pretty cool. And inside it, we're also getting a little bit more story and some, uh, some inclusion of some, um, I don't want to say villains, because Flatline is more of an anti-hero, I guess. Now she's kind of dating Robin, I guess. They have like a little thing going on. But anti-hero, and then her sister is also there. We're going to start with Flatline, because she's right here uh, at the bottom of the pa panel there with Robin. Yes, we. this also was there last month, too, but we're continuing the story here in, in the issue eight. So, yeah, I didn't do Dollar Bin Digging for a few months, so I'm going to play catch up. The Flatline, the character, she first appeared in Robin number one, which was only a few years ago. It's 2021. Uh, this series here inside, you get introduced to the character. I mean, it's no confusion of who she is. It's call me Flatline. Like she jumps right at you, announcing her name. So, you know, she's there. She is on the scene. Even with that. And I think we've talked about this book before. It's still because uh, it's been a few years. I might even cover this on Dollar Bin Digging a while back because of that reason. But we'll bring it back. They're a copy selling for a dollar or five bucks or up to nine bucks. Yeah, it's up to you. Uh, you, you do have uh, Mother Soul also in this, a uh, Respawn, some other characters. But Flatline uh, is the one that I'm uh, pointing out for today's purposes. Available copies, too. Uh, it's four to five bucks. It's basically cover price still in a lot of places. So you finding it in a discount box of some manner, whether it be a dollar box, whether it be half off cover, however your place or wherever you're doing discount shopping goes, there's probably a discount version of this out there for you still. So Robin, number one, get that first flat line. But as I showed you also in this story and what's going on, we get reintroduced to her sister, Mila, who is, uh, I think it's her older sister, but apparently she also has powers as well, even though it seemed with her origins that Flatline was the only one who had these, like, communicate with the dead kind of uh, powers or something. I don't fully on understand it. I mean, I kind of get it, but it's kind of loosey-goosey to me, but whatever. Her sister in this backstory is uh, introduced to us in the Robin Annual for 2021. So in this bright, bright pink cover, uh, and you see Flatline right there, front and center. Her sister is introduced throughout this story. Uh, and she's there with the hat sitting, you know, sitting with her saying, why can't you just be normal? And you can see her, her predilection for the that look with the skull and all that and the dead. Uh, and then again, she gets her powers when her grandfather passes. And then we'll find out later that her sister gets powers as well or something. Uh, but in this issue, her sister's there in a, bun a bunch of pages and panels too. But uh, that's her first appearance. Uh, she shows up and look, it, oh, sorry, I didn't grab the uh, pricing information on this. These are from the old deck, but again, this is a similar, similar, similar thing. You'll see cover price or less. You can find these things, uh, and, uh, good luck to you out there. Sorry, I didn't slide. I don't feel like updating it right now because, uh, I'm already sat down to film this and we're already half hour in, but you get the point. Go, go, go digging. That's $6 cover price, by the way. Next book in our last book, or well, not last book, last topic uh, for this week will be Wolverine number 47. 
which also came out this week. New release. Continuing Sabretooth War. Uh, a lot of Sabretooths, a lot of Wolverines, a lot of blood, a lot of guts, a lot of action rolling out in this thing. But first character we want to just kind of focus in on here inside the... And she's been around throughout this whole Sabretooth War. But once again, I'm catching up on Dollar Ben Digging, just going off of issues that came out this week. And there she is here. This is the character of Necra. Uh, who's kind of playing like a bad, you know, a big bad type role in this series, an antagonist. So Necra appeared way back in the 70s in the final issue, I think it's the last issue, of Shanna the She-Devil, issue five. Now, this is going to be a tricky one, because I know sometimes you guys find these like copper age, got a beat up of uh, copper bronze type of books that are just kind of uh, buried in boxes. That's what I'm saying. You might find one of these in there for that price. Because outside of that, this could come, if you're looking at higher grade, with a bit of a price. So copies have recently sold for 10 bucks to 30 bucks, 15 bucks. Again, it depends on condition. I mean, very fine for $15 ain't that bad. But you can also see copies, higher grade, I guess, for 30 Asking prices all over the place as well, 13 25 20 bucks. And that 20 bucks is for a very good copy. So it's again, it it depends. The, the market's going to be weird and wild for this one, but it's just a weird book for you to know. And she is right there on the cover, so I didn't have to show you inside. Enter Necra. She's right there. But uh, it's just one to keep an eye out for. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to know stuff like this, right? So that's why I figured I'd share it. Uh, but on top of that, also inside this issue, and a character that might get a little more, a uh, little more play, at least as far as this storyline goes, and then we'll see beyond it. It seems that they're taking Sabretooth's son great in creed and turning him into this it, it looks like a mechanized version of it looks like albert it looks like a saber tooth version of albert if you know the wolverine the cyborg wolverine his name is albert that's what i thought of and his i'm the bad seed so i don't know that's gonna be his name his name's gonna be bad seed but it seems that way and considering great in creed was just a human the human son of saber tooth without powers he was like a almost like a politician when he was first introduced. Oh, I'm already getting ahead of myself here, but Great and Creed first appeared, as I'm show, going to show you, Uncanny X-Men 299 for well, way, way back. Tons of copies of this. This one is heavily printed, easily available. A lot of copies of this thing out there. You can definitely find this for a buck, I'm telling you. Inside, uh, and yes, it's not just this one panel, but there's a lot of story that kind of bounces back and forth with this news or TV show appearance of Charles Xavier and other characters like uh, Senator Kelly. And then you got uh, Great and Creed there on a televised thing. And then Beast shows up. He's also there arguing, going at it. And he's anti-mutant, anti-mutant, anti-mutant because his dad's a mutant uh, and basically abandoned him. But Great and Creed, this is his first appearance. And you see what he eventually becomes, which I think will probably be a bit of a more interesting character than uh, this storyline was at the time. I mean, this is okay, but it also is a little boring. Uh, but with that said, this book, again, $1.50, six bucks. One sold for six bucks. That's kind of impressive. I think it was a newsstand. So you got a weird newsstand bump uh, that people like to pay a premium for, even though books at this time, I wouldn't pay premiums for newsstands. Uh, but with that said, four or five bucks or $1.50, it, it's very cheap. I'm telling you, you can find this in the dollar bin out there. Uh, and if you want Great Creeds first, it's that's one you can find. So with that all said, sorry I missed up on the pricing for that Robin annual. But like I said, you can find a cover price or less out there. Um, if you want the uh, first appearance of um, Flatline's sister, who knows where this is going to go? Because, uh, again, that story's still rolling on. And uh, maybe she gets a bigger profile at some point going forward. But with that all said... Thanks for stopping by and checking this out. Make sure you go check out the article over on comicbookinvest.com. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I'm still having a blast doing this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these uh, little videos that I like to put out, as well as all the live shows we do here on the channel. Uh, try to keep good content coming your way almost every day, if not every day. And uh, with that all said, uh, I guess I'll see you, you know, soon with some more content. All right. Later.